Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Unrooted Track and Field Edition and my guest for this week's show is none other than junior on the track and field team here at Menlo College, Elijah Redding Moment. Elijah, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Thank you for inviting me. You're very welcome. Your second interview on the show and interestingly enough, I couldn't find the first one on social media. That's okay. You just leave that one alone. I find <laughs> that to be so interesting because we live in an era where nothing seems to go away from social media. Yeah. And yet I couldn't find something that I know definitely happened between the two of us. Yeah, it's okay. I stuttered a lot in that last one, so a chance to redeem myself. Andy stuttered on the first take of this one as well. We've moved on past that. There's no proof. That's true. There is no proof. But now you can lean <laughs> back in your chair and go, yeah, I'm a returner. Yeah, I'm a returner on I'm the show. Here. I've done this before, <laughs> and I'm ready to rock. All right, so last year on the show, mm -hmm. we heard that you give some of the best restaurant recommendations. I believe that was Johnny Monkholm who said that. So go ahead and give me a few of them right now. Where are some places, could be in the area, could be elsewhere, I don't know, that I need to absolutely go to? Well, pertaining to people, new people coming to Menlo, Elgru. Of course, it's yes. Definitely the staple. So many chains of that restaurant. I've never even seen so many restaurants in the area before, mm -hmm. but Elgru's everywhere. And then you should try Nobu. It's in Palo Alto. Okay. There's one in LA as well. I suggest going to the LA one rather than the Palo Alto one. Why? It's just too expensive here. And the food is, it's okay. What kind of good. food? What kind of food? It's a mixture between Japanese and Peruvian. Okay. Sounds like yeah. something my girlfriend would definitely like. I don't yeah. know about me, but that sounds like something she would enjoy. Yeah. And then my last choice would be the Chateau in LA. It's a hotel, but they have a restaurant inside. You got to make a res reservation, but it's really good. What do they have? What's their, what is their... Everything. Everything. Burgers. I, I, I just order the fries, honestly. You just yeah. go straight fries? Nothing yeah. else? I love potatoes. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I, I do too, as much as the next guy, but apparently not as much as you. Yeah, I just... If you, you'll see me eating fries at any point of the day. Really? So in the yeah. cafeteria? If they have them. True. That hasn't always been the case. Yeah. Do you enjoy sweet potato fries? No. Okay. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad <laughs> you agree with me yeah. there. I am. I, it seems like I'm one of the few people who does not enjoy them. They're just weird. It's it's unnatural. Yeah, yeah. The sweetness just, it's something that I, I yeah. completely do not agree. My potatoes do not need to be sweet. They need to be salty. Salty. But not sweet. There you go. Vic, don't listen to this at all because I know that's not something you want to hear, but oh gosh. <laughs> the saltier the better. I, I will give you that. Now, PR seemed to be a regular for you and a couple of others during every single meet over the course of the year. What enables you to regularly, regularly put up big performances on a weekly basis? Uh, I'd probably say sleep and hydration, but shout out to the coaches because they give pretty good workouts. Yep. You know, I wouldn't be here without them, so... Shout out to them. Do you find it difficult to continue to PR on a weekly basis when the season's going and you're competing back to back to back to back weekends, or does that help you get into a rhythm? I feel as though it helps me get into a rhythm, but like I'm not gonna PR every meet. So once that day comes, I'm gonna be <laughs> hurt. <laughs> I'm gonna be hurt for sure. Oh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. so far you've been doing it. So why? I mean, yeah. Why stop there? Take it through the rest of the year. Take it through the rest of your career. I plan on it. If you do that, Elijah Redding Moment's <laughs> going to be making some history for the track program, no doubt. Let's talk about the team here a little bit. The Oaks were off last weekend. So when you're getting towards this point in the year, close to GSAC championships, mm -hmm. do you find a weekend off with no competition to be beneficial to you guys and the rest of the team? Extremely beneficial. Uh, competing, I don't know how long it's been, maybe two to three months like back to back is definitely taxing on the body. And uh, we were all just relaxing last weekend, so we appreciate it a lot. And then we just come back fresher for the next meet, so. For sure. Now Menlo has a relatively small roster. It's something that you're used to by now, but yeah. it seems like you guys have such a strong rapport on and off the track. Do you find the smaller roster beneficial for your team chemistry? Yes, actually yeah. I do. Uh, we just get closer and the bonds get stronger. It's something, it's, it's natural, yeah. Do, does, key, does team chemistry really play a role in track and field? Uh, you hear about it talked in baseball and other, you know, basketball, but is it something that really comes into play in track and field? Uh, it does and it doesn't. 
like most of my events are individual, so I don't really need a team per se. But just being around a team that you like is just good rapport. You know, it gives you good energy, makes you want to compete even harder. Yeah. Now, some of those guys on the team are newer guys, younger guys, a lot of freshmen, and you're a veteran to this program. What can you say about some of the performances from the new guys who have stepped in here during 2019? Uh, very impressive. Uh, I feel like they came to Menlo knowing what they wanted, and they're just ready to, to go after it. Yeah, I was very impressed. Every, all the new people are, like, really cool. I love them so much. <laughs> they're cool, and they've been setting PRs program records mm -hmm. every single week, so. Makes us look really good. It does make you guys <laughs> look pretty good. Now, it's gonna be a busy weekend for you and Benji Rono down south, a couple mm -hmm. of high profile events against some elite competition starting off at Azusa Pacific. Are these the type of meets that you guys really cherish and embrace the opportunity to compete against some of the best? Love them. You know, most people don't really hear about Menlo or that we even have a program. So when we're out there just blowing them out the water, it just shows them, don't sleep on us. <laughs> oh yeah, and look for Benji and Elijah to do exactly that this weekend down at Azusa Pacific. All right, let's get in the final segment of the show, Elijah, Brownie Bites. I'm gonna ask you three off the wall questions. Give me your best answers. All right. <laughs> Question number one, which teammate would hate almost any restaurant recommendation that you give them? Benji, his, his diet, <sighs> most people don't know this, but this guy literally just like drinks coffee eats bananas and chipotle that's it so any other suggestions that i offer he just like chipotle that's it the bananas i can confirm because logan said that last week he steals right. bananas so that's definitely true <laughs> and also he's so tiny like i can't imagine that yeah. he actually does eat a lot of other he things. doesn't <laughs> he'll stay that way forever i think so I think well, he likes it. i mean hey if, if it's helping him do what he's doing on that's the track true cross country True. and track and field put together. I mean, keep it up. I, I'm not gonna complain about yeah, it. Yeah, it's each one's own. Exactly. Question number two, which teammate would be most willing to try the famous fried crickets? Fried crickets. Um, I'm gonna have to say Logan Pine. He's a go-getter, he likes to try new things. He's actually been cooking with Ben and Naomi in the Russell Center. Uh, they cook a bunch of Kenyan food. And then we all try it. So, so it's something else that Benji eats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, when he's able to cook it. Do you think you would try crickets? I've tried them before. Have you? Mm -hmm. How are they? They're all right. <laughs> I would be so afraid to do that. They're cooked. They're but not moving. I, yes, but still, it's just the it's concept protein. of eating a bug is just weird just to me. got to close your eyes. Close my eyes and <laughs> pretend it's chicken? Yeah, right? basically. Just tastes like chicken, right? That's It's good. You got to try it. All right, well, if you know what? I, I know that a lot of people rave about them in Seattle. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's like a specific Seattle thing. I know they have them at Safeco Field where the Mariners okay. play baseball, but oh, nice. uh, if I ever go up there, I guess I'm going to have to. You have to try. You only live once. Or maybe we're in a simulation. Yeah, unless yeah. I die eating the crickets. It'll be worth it. What do you know? <laughs> I I'm not so they, sure they, about they that. They just taste good. That's it. What They're do they like taste like? sunflower seeds. They're like sunflower seeds? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. I can get on board with that, folks. <laughs> One day I will eat crickets in Seattle. I can't believe I just said that out <laughs> loud, but we're gonna move on to question number three. Which teammate would most likely want to accompany you on a trip to the moon? Hmm, all of them, but I'd probably say Noble. Noble, I don't know why, I just feel like he looks like an astronaut. He looks like an astronaut? <laughs> yeah. How does so, one have the astronaut look? I don't know. I just picture him in a suit traveling with me to the moon. Okay. Yeah, other than that, I'd probably say Logan, but I already said him. True. Yeah. I mean, you're trying to spice up the answers. Yeah, That's good. But no noble as an astronaut. You don't see it? No, I don't see it, but I don't see it because that suit would bog down his running, and all I see him do is sure. run. So I, I just don't, I don't feel like that. That man's a horse. He'd yeah. probably run laps around the moon. Who knows? He probably would find yeah. a way to do it. The first person to ever run a mile on the moon. Yeah. What's, your mi what's your mile time <laughs> when there's no gravity? Uh, I can't even think anything further than a mile. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if you'd want to even I mean, roam how big further the moon away. Is. Well, big. No. Oh. I mean, it's not as big as Earth. I don't but. even know mile times. I don't know what a good mile time is. You're a, you're a runner, and you don't know what a good mile time is? No. 
I, I honestly don't look into like track and field statistics other than like my own. It's weird. Okay. I don't want, I like watching the Olympics. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to tell you my mile time because then I'll just set a low bar. So, okay. Well, same here. <laughs> well, you could, you're at least in shape. You could do it. To sprint and jump. Well, not then just go, the, well, you can sprint a mile. I bet it's you It's harder. Can. No, it's harder than you. Like, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure it is because you're trained to go shorter distance. But yeah. I bet you could do four laps around that track, Jog. in a much better time than you're giving yourself credit for. We should go out there and try. <laughs> I already did my my running for today, so I'm. I do see you out there. I am out there a couple of times a week. Impressive. So better than most. Better. That's true. Better yeah. than most. I gotta. I. I mean, have you seen these arms? They're very skinny, so I got to do something else, you know? Skinnier arms. Right? Like, we, we match kind of <laughs> in that sense. Elijah, thanks for joining me on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome, folks. The track and field team down in Southern California this weekend. Elijah and Benji will be taking part in the Brian Clay Invitational on Friday. That's a high-profile event, and they'll be in action down in Azusa Pacific. Stay tuned to MenlaAthletics.com for all the results. We invite you to tune into the next episode of Unrooted Track and Field Edition when Elijah Redding Moment will select the next interviewee by me, Brian Brownfield, right here on the show. Until then, we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. I'm gonna take my horse to the hotel room. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. I got the horses in the bag. Horse stock is attached.